Indiana Beach is an independently owned park in Monticello, Indiana, and boasts six, soon to be seven, coasters by the end of the 2022 season. I had the pleasure of visiting this park for the first time in September of 2021, and had a great time here. We were only there for a couple hours, but due to how long, low the lines were and how compact the park was, we got everything done in under two hours easily with re-rides. It's a very quirky park with some interesting ride location choices, and many rides are built right on top of each other, or even have the same entrance with walkways that get you to each ride. The park is of course on the water, hence the name Indiana Beach, but there isn't really a beach, it's more of a, it's more just right on Lake Schaefer. The park also has two entrances, a sort of front of the park and back of the park entrance, with free parking on either side. The entrance across the lake is easily the best one and gives you great views of the park skyline as you walk across the bridge. The park is also fairly well priced at $40 per person and is even better when you consider you don't have to pay for parking. I love how close everything is in the park and you can easily walk to all the coasters in very little time with the exception of maybe Steel Hog, but that still isn't that far that way. As for the coasters specifically, Cornball Express is my favorite, followed by closely by Steel Hog, which both give great ejector pops, and Steel Hog has great hang time as well. I'm sure the soon-to-be-open Schwarzkopf triple looping coaster will be great, and Cyclone looks like a nice addition as well, but those were sadly not open yet when I visited. If you do enter from the side with the bridge, you are greeted with a great view of the skyline, as I mentioned before, and once you get across to the other side, there are a few rides in that area, including the entrance to one of the sky lifts, which also gives you great views of the park as well. But most of the rides are further down the midway. As you continue down the main path, you pass by one of the most unique coasters in the country, Lost Coaster of Superstition Mountain, which I highly re recommend trying to do early due to its low ride capacity, with only eight people per train. Right next to it is also the park's famous taco shop, which has some pretty solid tacos from what I hear, for a good price. As you continue down the main midway, you can find some more classic flat rides as well as the antique cars. Further down is where most of the midway games are and the park's dark ride, Den of Lost Thieves, is. The park also has a small water park section around here, as well as the current location of one of the new for 2022 coasters, Cyclone. You can also take the Schaefer Queen boat out from this section, which is included with admission to my understanding, and it takes you around Lake Schaefer in a small boat tour, which looks really nice if, you've, if you find you've done everything else in the park has to offer. If you turn left off the main midway, you reach where most of the coasters are located in the park, and they're all pretty much right on top of each other with Tigger, Cornball Express, and Hoosier Hurricane all located around this area. This is also where you can find the entrance for Steel Hog, a little further away, right next to the park's other entrance, and eventually where you can find American Dryer Looping later this year. This section also has the park's log flume, the park's train, and the park's kitty area. Overall, Indiana Beach is a fantastic little park, and you should definitely visit it if you are anywhere in the area, or even just near Chicago or Indianapolis, if you have the time. The park has a lot to offer in a very small amount of space, and they are clearly wanting to expand with multiple new ride additions in the last couple years, including two new coasters this year, so I'll definitely want to try to return if they keep expanding. The park has a fantastic wooden coaster collection, and its steel coasters are getting better and better each year as well. The park also has a bunch of fun flat rides throughout the park, and some quirky sections to, to discover during your first visit. The park was not crowded at all on the Sunday that I went, which obviously won't always be the case, but it was great to ride all the coasters in almost less than an hour with no lines and re-rides, something that bigger parks like Dollywood or Kings Island could almost never offer. I highly recommend visiting this fun little park, and I hope this park keeps getting better as the years go on with the new owners. Be sure to check out my other Indiana Beach coaster reviews and subscribe for more theme park content in the near future.